The surprising thing about the Fantastic Beasts franchise is that it's getting more support and enthusiasm than the new eighth installment of the Harry Potter series. I mean, everyone is dying for the sequel to come out, which will happen exactly one year from today, but people aren't begging for a continuation of the 19 years later story. And today I'll be looking at several things from both Fantastic Beasts and Harry Potter. Gellert Grindelwald, the Deathly Hallows necklace, Credence, Newt Scamander, Macusa, and Luna and Xenophilius Lovegood. And seriously, how many movies have villains with white hair? I mean, you've got Grindelwald, President Snow, Martin Brenner from Stranger Things, Charles Muntz, Anyway, ready for a theory? Hey everyone, it's CTO of the Theory Channel, and you might know that I prefer to make my theories the most awesome they can be, rather than the most evidential they can be. I just believe that it gives the viewer an even better experience through making it more exciting, even if the theory's a bit far-fetched. And that's exactly what I have for you today. Out of all the, now, 43 videos that I've published, this was the strangest and most confusing one to make. I wasn't even sure how to title it, because I could have taken it in a few different directions, and ended up setting up a poll on Twitter. The theory revolves around four different characters, one crucial necklace, and two different movies, so... Yeah, let's get into it. As I said in the intro, Fantastic Beast 2 is coming out in exactly one year, and its predecessor has left many intriguing, unanswered questions for us. How does Jacob Kowalski get back into the wizarding world? Where is the real Percival Graves? And what I'll be theorizing on today, how will Gellert Grindelwald escape the clutches of Mikusa? So during the last Grindelwald scene, when he's about to be taken into Mikusa custody, Grindelwald asks the president, do you think he can hold me? To which he replies, we'll do our best. This sort of implies that Grindelwald has been known for escaping before, and he looks almost delighted at the opportunity to do it again. But how exactly will he, um, do that? Well, I think the answer is displayed in the Fantastic Beasts movie. When Grindelwald gives the Deathly Hallows necklace to Credence, he says to him to touch the symbol when he finds a child, and he will know and immediately come to him. Credence eventually does this after his mother was killed, and we see Grindelwald instantly apparate to him. It's safe to say that this necklace was enchanted by Grindelwald. He put some kind of tracking or summoning charm on it to track the person touching it. But what if the necklace had a deeper curse set in place? What if the necklace acts like the Dark Mark does for Voldemort? When Voldemort touches the Mark, his Death Eaters immediately know where he is and come to him, as if summoned. No one has ever really questioned how that worked, but it could be just like the necklace. The Dark Mark was Voldemort's symbol, and the Deathly Hallows was Grindelwald's symbol. Grindelwald had many followers by the 1920s, which explains why he would need an item like this. Plus, when Grindelwald gives the necklace to Credence, he tells him that he would only trust a few people with it. Why would it be so important to him if it didn't have intense magical powers? Of course he was a big believer and was after the Hallows, but a generic necklace like this shouldn't be that important to him, unless it had bigger intents. But wait a minute, where was the necklace at the end of the movie? The last time we see it is on Credence, and then he turns into an Obscurial and... still has it on him? When the Macusa workers attack him, his small Obscurus form flees the scene, but did he still have the necklace? Probably not, because he was literally torn to shreds by the attacking spells, and it might have been only a spirit that survived. But a cursed object like that isn't likely to be destroyed during something like this, similar to how a horcrux couldn't be destroyed without basilisk venom. So the necklace found its way to the nearest wizard, Newt Scamander, without him even knowing it. Okay, so those were the events within the first Fantastic Beasts movie, but you're almost definitely asking, where does Xenophilius Lovegood fall in any of this? Because Fantastic Beasts takes place in America, and Xenophilius Lovegood lived in England for all of his life. If only there was a character that we see leave America and go to England at the end of Fantastic Beasts. Oh yeah, there is. And that character just happens to be the one with the necklace. Newt took a ship back to England in the penultimate scene of the film, meaning that the necklace went with him. And going back to Xenophilius for a second, the man has white hair and is pretty gaunt and frail. He looks relatively old to me. Although it's a stretch, he might even be in his 70s during the events of Harry Potter, meaning the 1990s. And if he was born in the 20s, that means that Xenophilius would have been a teenager by the time Fantastic Beasts 2 was happening. Again, far-fetched, but just stick with me on it. 
We know that Xenophilius was a big believer of the Deathly Hallows, and was even accused by Victor Crumb of supporting Grindelwald himself. Well, what if he was a supporter of Grindelwald? What if Xenophilius was literally the one to break him out of Nakusa? As I said earlier, Newt was the last one with the necklace in Fantastic Beasts, and he takes it back to England with him. We don't exactly know what Newt would be doing back in his home country, but presumably something to do with his creatures. And Xenophilius Lovegood was also a supporter of unique magical creatures, just like Newt. I would love to see the two of them meet up in the Fantastic Beasts sequel, and if they were to, Xenophilius would have possibly seen the necklace and taken it from Newt, later on summoning Grindelwald by touching the Deathly Hallows symbol. This would essentially break Grindelwald out of Macusa, according to my logic on the necklace, and in doing that, Xenophilius would have been treated like a hero to Grindelwald, becoming one of his closest and most trusted followers. Pretty cool. And the solid proof we have is that Xenophilius still wears the necklace in the Harry Potter series. The fact that he was so willing to teach Harry, Ron, and Hermione about the Deathly Hallows shows how much of a supporter of Grindelwald he still is, and of course, a believer in the Hallows. And I have even more evidence to show that Xenophilius could be a dark wizard. Notice how he's always acting antsy around other people. This could be his inept social skills, or the fact that he's hiding a dark secret. Crumb makes it clear that most people wouldn't wear Grindelwald's sign around their necks so freely, making it even weirder that Xenophilius would do such a thing, if he wasn't a follower himself. Also, since Grindelwald is supposed to have a very important role in Fantastic Beasts 2, it seems that he's not going to be locked up in a prison cell for the whole movie, meaning that Xenophilius would have had to break Grindelwald out very soon into Fantastic Beasts 2. And just to sum everything up that I've theorized on today, the Deathly Hallows necklace that Grindelwald gave Credence is under a complex charm, and whenever someone touches it, Grindelwald is immediately summoned to that place. After Credence is torn apart by the Macusa workers, the necklace ends up with Newt, who takes it with him back to England. There, Newt meets up with Xenophilius Lovegood, since they're both very fond of magical creatures. Xenophilius takes the necklace from Newt and touches the symbol, thereby summoning Grindelwald and becoming one of his most loyal followers. And the necklace that Xenophilius wears during Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is the exact same one. But do I believe that this is actually what we'll see in the next Fantastic Beasts movie? No, not even close. I acknowledge that this theory is very far-fetched and wasn't entirely supported by the movies, but I still think it's really cool and interesting. The blatant fact that Xenophilius Lovegood could be the one to help Grindelwald and Fantastic Beasts is just awesome, and although the timing is a stretch, the theory still fits. Anyway, if you enjoy the video, give it a like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Fantastic Beasts or Harry Potter content. I plan to make theories on Stranger Things, Murder on the Orient Express, and possibly Coraline in the next few weeks, so stay tuned for all of those as well. Subscribe by clicking my logo on the left, or click the top right video for another Harry Potter theory. That's like one of my best theories, so go check it out now. See you later.